Well, hello and good evening, and welcome to the, this special board meeting of the Azusa Unified School District Board of Education on uh, January 18th, 2022. I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock, and we will begin with item 1.2, our flag salute. Ready? Begin. Next, we'll move to a roll call, item 1.3. Board member Rodriguez-Pena? Here. Board member Bo? Here. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Board Member Arianes? Present. And I myself, Board Member Greer, am here as well. We'll move on then to item 2.1, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion, motion to approve. approve. Moved by Board Member Rodriguez-Pena. Second. Second by Board Member Arianes. Any discussion? Then let's move to a vote. And the motion passes five to zero. Next, we move to item 3.1, public comment on uh, agenda items only. This is an opportunity for the public to address the Board of Education on agenda items only. Individual speakers may be allowed up to three minutes to address the Board of Education on any agenda item only. When the public wishes to address the board on any agenda item, they may fill out a blue card, stand at the podium, or raise their hand while in Zoom attendance. The board will take blue card requests first, followed in order by speakers at the podium, and then those in the Zoom attendance. And again, just to be explicit and remind that during this space, we have, uh, there are a few items on our agenda, and we will be taking comments on those items only. So if your comment is not in regards to an item on the special meeting, um, I will remind you of that, and we'll move on to the next uh, speaker. Uh, do we have any blue cards or anyone? Do we, have, do we have any blue cards? We do. And Fabian Pavon? You may need to turn the microphone on. Hello, hello, tech, one, two, one, two, three. Welcome. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Fabian Pavon. Uh, and I am a board member with the Latina and Latino Roundtable of San Gabriel Valley. Uh, and I'm here to state my opposition for the continued use of the Azusa Aztec mascot. Uh, the Azusa Mas Aztec mascot is a misrepresentation of the Mexica Aztec. And so for generations, the, the Mexica Aztec has been uh, uh, used uh, uh, you know, inappropriately has been misrepresenting our people and the community of Azusa has been getting a false, inaccurate representation of Mexica culture through that map. And the, it's, it's unfortunate that for, for generations, this mascot has been used because now descendants of the Mexica, descendants of the Aztec can't even tell when their culture is being misrepresented as it is with them. And so uh, today uh, we come with folks who have been, uh, you know, have been aware of their Mexica Aztec root culture, uh, a culture that has been passed down, uh, ceremonies that have been passed down through the generations. And I hope that you listen to those indigenous people who have been trained, who have been, uh, who, who have taken the time to, to take that deep understanding uh, to learn from people who have uh, had Aztec ceremonies and, and history and culture passed down to them, right? And so uh, with the Latina Latino Roundtable, we've been working with uh, Grupo Danza Azteca Toyacan, uh, and we've been providing an accurate version, an accurate representation of the Mexica Aztec uh, uh, to the community free. We've been teaching them about 
uh, uh, dances and, and ceremony and things like that, right? They've been getting an, an accurate representation. And I hope that you all please, you know, reach out to indigenous people, reach out to, to, to Mexica folks, reach out to uh, the Tangva and, and the Quiche here uh, it, because the Mexica, the, 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 uh, the Aztec, the Azusa Aztec, uh, you know, there's no such thing as an Azusa Aztec. This is Azutanga. Azutanga is the, uh, the native village that was here before Azusa, before the Spanish, before uh, the Mexicans, before the U.S. And we need to honor that. We need to do our best to reach out to those indigenous people and to have their histories and cultures reflected in the curriculum. Ethnic studies is going to be a re graduation requirement in, in schools all over California. And so I hope that you all take the time to make sure that these cultures are ac accurately represented. Please use this as an opportunity to connect with these indigenous people, whether they be uh, Mexica Aztec, whether they be uh, 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 Tongva, Quiche, Gabrielino, uh, any of these things. Please use this as an opportunity to educate yourselves and the community on Thank an you. accurate representation of indigenous people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabian. Next, we have Miguel Angel Lopez. Um, uh, I introduced myself in my ancestral language, which is not uh, Aztec, it's actually Otomi. But even the word Otomi is also from the Nahuatl language. Uh, we actually call ourselves um, the Nanus. And uh, I think the representation of the Azusa Aztec um, pushes this like monolithic idea of like, oh, just because you are Mexican, that means you come from uh, Aztec ancestry, which is not always the case. And it really uh, pushes like uh, other people, other indigenous communities. And uh, it, it really makes it hard for people who are not of Aztec ancestry to connect with their language, their traditions, their own like practices, because um, we're similar, but we have different practices and traditions and stuff. Um, and uh, I just want to say that, uh, especially uh, for me, it's been hard for really to find my own language, but now I've been able to uh, find books on the internet and stuff. And it, it just shows the lack of work that you all are putting into, like, even bringing proper representation of what Asik or Mashika is, you know? And, like, I'm not even getting paid for this. So, um, yeah, uh, that's all I have to say. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Next, we have Julian Mandujano. It's a shame that that sounds like gibberish to you all, and it's a shame that I know so little of my own language. I just said, you know, I extend my greetings to my friends and relatives, and that my name is Julian Angel Ibanez Mandujano. Um, in coming here, you know, I'd like to kind of piggyback off of what my two friends had said. You know, it's good that we have representation as someone who has had my own people enslaved. I mean, as a matter of fact, 2022 is a hundred year anniversary of us being freed from slavery, my personal tribe. So I understand representation is important and it's something that we all crave and value. Um, it's just the type of representation that we have. You know, there's other ways to do this, like ethnic studies in our city. It's taking a cumulative effort of different folks in the community and highs and lows and ups and downs and very hard conversations to organize certain things that, you know, at first may have felt uncomfortable to us. I mean, even myself, my tribe being a border tribe from Sonora and Tucson, Arizona. I mean, I'm not a California native. I was born here, but I have to acknowledge that this is Tongva land. This is Tovangar, you know, not anywhere else that we want it to be just because we want representation. And it's nice that we have that, but we have to look at other ways for us to get that. I mean, 
I've seen some of the pictures and images via the internet, and it's a little strange to me. I mean, out of any ceremony I've been to in my entire life, uh, there's a drum that's bigger than the guy. I mean, I've never seen that, like, at all. I mean, I don't even know how you would make that. And I make instruments and stuff like that. It's crazy. It's wild. You know, it's really flamboyant in a way. It's like a real big, like, grandiose, like, it's like uh, romanticizing something. And that's the problem, you know. We don't want people thinking that, like, we're these mystical beings. I mean, we're humans just like you. You know, we, it, when you think of tribe, another word for tribe is family. You know, so I, like, it's, in a way, it's like somebody's family. You know, you, you want to go up and ask these tribes to do things for you, but that's somebody's auntie, that's somebody's uncle. You know, I mean, we have to be more understanding of the people we're actually speaking of around us, you know. Like my other friend said, I mean, we're not all... Aztec or so-called Aztec Mexica, you know, it's the true word. Like, we're not all Mexica. I'm yo eme, like I said, Tucson and Sonora. You know, if you want real representation or things like that in March, they got Mexica New Year. That's coming up. You know, a lot of places have events. Like he said, we have danza. You know, I teach a beating class in Pomona. So y'all want some culture? There's ways to get it. Um, If the only example of culture you have is something that you obtained in high school that's kind of sad thank you thank you for sharing next we have linda gutierrez hello buenas noches my name is linda gutierrez and i am zapoteca from oaxaca mexico I've been an active Danza Azteca community member for over 11 years now, and I am against this high school using Azteca as a mascot. Being part of Danza Azteca, our regalia is very sacred, very sacred to us, and it's usually passed down by other members in the community or our elders. So to see, to see it being used as a costume, very hurtful not only to me, my community, but hundreds of different natives that live on these land. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Next, we have Alejandro Chipecuatl Juarez. Please uh, correct me if I, if I pronounce that wrong. Yali, Nano Toka, Alejandro Chipecua Juarez, Plaza Camatli, Tongva Kish, Carolino, Tuscana. Hello and good night to everyone. My name is Alejandro Chipecua Juarez. I want to acknowledge and give thanks to the Tongva, the Gabrielino, the Kish, the original indigenous people of this land. Dear board members of the Sousa Unified School District. My name is Alejandro and I'm of a Matlasinka, Nahuatl, Mexica ancestry, most commonly mislabeled the Aztec. For generations, my family has been knowledge keepers of our culture and traditions, not only in our ancestral land of Mexico, but as well as here in the San Gabriel Valley, or as our indigenous Gabrielino Tongva relatives know it, as the Tonga Bar. For 25 years, my family and I have taught Aztec Mexica dance in the city of La Puente, Awingna, and in Pomona, Toibina, through our group called Toyacan, and represent over 50 families with this message and that I'm here today. We have connected our people back to our ancestral traditions and languages and practices that were nearly extinguished through colonization. Throughout the years, we have experienced much disrespect and racism through the miseducation and the ignorant use of our culture and identity as school mascots. We have observed how the Azusa Aztecs mascot alongside other schools um, that use our nation and tribe as a mascot disrespectfully make use of our ceremonial headdresses known as our copilis, our wewets, which are our drums, and our regalia. These are sacred objects that are earned throughout the years and earned during ceremonies and battles. Our communities have taken a strong stance and we do not support any entities that use our people's name and costume as mascots. Imagine it as if, of, as if other cultures were mascots, right? As if African-Americans or Jewish, you wouldn't do that to a people. People are not mascots. Cultures are not mascots. We are human beings. Mascots 
the same thing as mascota, right? As a, as a pet in Spanish. Are my people animals to you? No, this is not it. It is disrespectful and dehumanizing and plays on the offensive stereotype of indigenous people. It further adds to the collective trauma that we have suffered enough through mass genocide, exploitation, and looting of our lands and material objects. With the current major changes happening in Azusa High um, District, we ask that you take a step in being on the right side of history and authentically honor indigenous people by changing the school's mascot. We understand that it may be difficult to some to grasp the seriousness and the effect this has on indigenous communities. Some people may even say that they're honoring my people by using this mascot. Maybe even offer alternatives like reforming the mascot by making it more culturally sensitive and educating people about the aspects. But the truth is none of these are valuable solutions, none. And only prolong the dehumanization and disrespect of, um, that is placed on our communities. The only action must be to remove the offensive mascot. The time is now. Please make the right decision today, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Clara. Clara, while you're preparing to come up, let me just remind everyone that we have a, there's a three minute limit. Uh, so please keep an eye on the clock um, because I, I will have to cut you off if you, if you go past uh, your the three minutes. Um, hello and good night to all. As an Azusa resident and guardian of two children that have and will attend Azusa High, a loud and proud Mexican first, but also an American, I find it disturbing that AUSD continues the U.S. tradition of stealing from other cultures simply because plenty gave up their own to be more accepted by this country. I, I from personal experience, went to a middle school named after D.W. Griffith, who filmed The Racist, Birth of the Nation, two different high schools, one with a sheik, another with an oiler as a mascot. Why is there so much pride in the continued destruction of the earth and cultures of the very people that ensured some of y'all's ancestor survival in this land? It's 2022. We've been trying to reach you, um, AUSD, since the 90s. It's time to answer the community's call. I ask you tonight to change the mascot of Asusa High. I want to thank, I also want to thank the elder um, who let me know about this meeting and the gatekeeper of Asusagna um, for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you. Next, we have Jenny Talamantes. I believe we have Jenny online. Yes. My name is Jenny Talamantes. I've come here today to discuss with you the matter of rebranding Azusa High School. The Aztec mascot should have been removed long ago. The current mascot is harmful and stereotypically racist. It is cultural appropriation. It is seen as offensive towards many people. As a student, I motioned the district give the students a choice and final decision on a new mascot for Azusa High School. Secondly, I'm a part of the sophomore class at Gladstone that is going to have the hardest time transitioning to a new school. Have you thought about the current sophomores transitioning to a new school they don't want? The generations and the alumni that hold that deep pride of being gladiators? We went through COVID, distance learning, and now you're closing our school. At least spare us our pride and don't make this any harder than it already is. Because these students aren't going to lose their teachers, their campus, their friends, and it isn't about making them go through something. It's about at least saving Gladstone High School pride. For those making the argument that it won't matter in a couple years, it will matter. To me, to teachers, to students, to alumni because Gladstone lives in our hearts. That is all for today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jenny. Next, we have Alex. Hello, thank you so much. Um, sincere gratitude to every person that has spoken tonight and thank you to the school board for holding this and really taking these words to heart. Um, you know, I was raised Mexican-American not knowing very much about my indigenous roots in Mexico. And I became incredibly curious. About two years ago, um, I did a DNA test and I started getting really interested when I found out I was indigenous. And I started going back through records and records and records. And there are Mexica 
leaders and historical figures that are a part of my family. And so we're not just talking about, you know, this is, this is not some mascot. When we look at these images of Mexica warriors in headdresses and in, and in their traditional clothing, this is culture, this is tradition. These are things that are heartfelt and mean things to people. So these are not just costumes. Our culture is not a costume. And I sincerely hope that this is taken to heart because I grew up not knowing a lot about the truth of who I am and not knowing a lot of indigenous culture because I was raised and I was schooled here in the United States. So these high schoolers that you're going to have to do and that are going to have to learn this new content, you know, it's, it's a complete clash when you've got kids in schools that are learning the right culture, that are learning the correct history, but yet we still have institutions that are using our culture as a mascot. So it's not okay. So I really wanted to come on tonight to say that you know, as someone who is a direct descendant to some of the last Mexica emperors, it is not okay. It is not okay to use our culture as a costume. And I would urge the council to listen to the community's voices and choose another mascot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Next, we have Jackie Hernandez. Hello, good night to everyone. First, I want to acknowledge we are on Tongva land who are still here in Azusa. Many of the speakers today have said so much that makes a strong statement to the removal of the Azusa High School mascot. I believe that many of us from Ladino background feel nostalgia and wanting to connect to our indigenous roots, but using a misappropriation of the Mexica warrior is not the way to do it. How many of us here know where the word Azusa comes from? The fact that many students from Azusa don't know is a sign of erasure and lack of recognition from the indigenous of this land, which are the Tongva. The Tongva tribe are also leading this effort along with the indigenous leaders from diverse nations and tribes to demand changes made to the Azusa mascot, that is image representation not only of the Mexica people, but the Inca and of their relatives. I ally with them in their demands to remove the mascot. Let's acknowledge from the understanding of the origins of the name of our city that this Aztec as a symbol of Azusa also erases history, not only of Azusa, but of also of the Tongva people. I recognize that some of the, Latino, some of the people from Latino backgrounds who also graduated or are still in Azusa High School may feel loss of indigenous and cultural connection due to the removal of the mascot. But this symbol is not rooted in our culture and respectful teachings of our ancestors and roots. But I do believe we can do better by removing the mascot while also opening the opportunity for proper education by adding indigenous teachings by Tongva, Mexica, and pan-indigenous leaders who can help our Latino students reconnect and embrace their indigenous roots in AUSD schools. The gap of knowledge, education, and wisdom of indigenous teachings is apparent in this discussion, and which is why I find important for the inclusion of education for Latino students that teaches Latino and Chicano studies, as well as indigenous for here in AUSD. I hope that you all as leaders and the school board can be courageous and make the wise choice to remove the ASIC mascot and also seek the education that is fundamental in teaching our children about indigenous history and culture to reconnect with our roots, have a sense of identity, and feel proud of our progress as we move forward. I urge you to listen to our Native leaders on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Next, we have Alexander Mujica. Oh, uh, could you hear me? Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yes. Hello. I am here because I was made aware that the Azusa School District had a problem, and that is appropriating indigenous culture in one of their schools, specifically Azusa High School, and it needs to stop. Just recently, a teacher was fired from Riverside County for mocking indigenous culture in her trigonometry class. Though she is held accountable, it still does not erase racism in both the United States and California. 
the United States has a real dark history of indigenous genocide and the erasure of indigenous culture and the continual cultural appropriation of indigenous culture. Azusa Unified needs to stop making a mockery of indigenous culture, specifically Aztec culture. All indigenous cultures are very different from one another. They're not all the same. Azusa High School continually misrepresents the, this specific indigenous culture, misre misrepresenting the specific headdress, the drum, and the uniform. This mis misrepresentation feeds into the racism and it feeds into racist stereotypes that will harm indigenous communities, specifically in this case, the Aztec community. I ask that Azusa Unified uh, to do better and to take down the offensive mascot, specifically the Mexica in Azusa High. I ask that Azusa Unified invest in Native American and Latinx ethnic courses in their schools. These ethnic courses will help the community get educated about the Latinx and indigenous history and culture, specifically here as well in the United States. It is imperative that we are taught this history so that we can get an accurate lens of these people and we can understand the history. We must be aware of racism and call it out as a community and protect marginalized communities because racism remains a huge problem today. Thank you, Alexander. Before we move on, I wanna remind the board of board, board policy 9323, which limits our public comment on any particular item to 20 minutes, unless we as a board vote to extend. And so let me ask the board if, if we are um, wanting to extend public comment on this particular item. I think this I is like a very important motion to extend. I second. Any additional discussion? Then we'll just, we'll just do a, a hand vote. Board member Bo? Yes. I'm also yes. Okay. We will proceed with Althea Ito. Good evening, school board members, Superintendent Ortega, Assistant Superintendent Mitchell, and other acclaimed cabinet members. My name is Althea Ito, and I am a junior attending Gladstone High School. I first want to thank all the Latinx and Latina speakers who chose to speak up for themselves and their cultures. I thank you all for your vulnerability and strength. Tonight, Similarly, I come before you today to discuss matters regarding the potential reconfiguration of Azusa High School's mascot. Azusa High School's commodification of their so-called mascot is nothing short if not a repulsive caricature of culture. Their use in costume in and of itself is a complete bastardization of the regalia that represents valor. From the feathers to the headdress, each garment represents a token of strength and power. Azusa High School's reconfiguration and manipulation to their sacred regalia is nonetheless a complete disregard to the indigenous pride and to indigenous pride and community. You wish to spend money on praying for higher education when you do not realize the unintentional ignorance you are systemically perpetuating. How are we as students supposed to be critical thinkers of our education, let alone our lives, when the thing that is supposed to be representing us poses as a complete antithesis to the district's mission st statement? After all, is it not our district that equips every student with the knowledge and skills for college and career readiness to to fulfill our purpose and positively impact society. What I mean to say is, this is all wrong. It should never be this way. You say you hear us and that you understand, but we cannot find it within ourselves to actually believe that. Because if you did, if you truly cared, you would you all would not just be talking about it. We are defined by the things we do, not by the pretty words, speeches, monologues, or soliloquies you feel the need to share. So no, you, you cannot say you understand who we are or where we come from. You may be from the community, but you are not the ones who will have to bear the messes that you all have made. It is our teachers, our staff members, administration, the students, your children, who will have to pay for your resolutions. We all know the district's financial decline was coming. As a matter of fact, we have predicted it. If not yourselves, the teachers and administrators who all lost their jobs and suffered significant pay cuts because of it. So why now? Why do you choose to say you care now? Clearly, your decisions say otherwise. You talk about funds. We have the funds. From Rosedale to Measure K, we have them. They are there. You just aren't simply doing enough. You do not care enough. And this is a fact we already know, a fact that Gladstone and schools all across the district are too painfully 
aware about. Maybe my coming here and speaking on behalf of my Gladstone community is entirely futile considering every decision made by the board these past few months have been nothing short but of neglect. But there are decisions in regards to the consideration of alumni, but may I ask which alumni? It certainly isn't for Gladstone. You cannot be an alumni if you do not have a home. I am a junior, so these reconfigurations will not affect me compared to to my underclassmen counterparts, but I want to be able to come back home. I want to be come back home and tell my mentors and teachers that their vein has been worth it thank to honor oh, and thank, thank you Althea. for everything they've done for me. Thank you. We have Dr. Sanchez. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good, after, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so my name is Dr. Irene Sanchez. I teach um, Latino, Latina, Latinx studies in Azusa. It's the only ethnic studies class. I'm also the mother of a pal panther. Um, and I'm also a danzante. And I don't think that comes up too often because sometimes I'll share it with my students uh, most of the time, right? Because I wanna give them an accurate representation of who the Mexica are and what the murals mean. I teach at all three high schools in Azusa Unified School District. So I have a unique perspective <laughs> walking in and out. And it's been a challenging five years. And what I've learned being the only ethnic studies, Latinx studies teacher for now, is that one of the most important things I do is cultivate a sense of community and through that belonging. It's ironic that I teach this class and my students this without the support uh, and inclusion of me and my professional background. The students in this community deserve respect and care for their backgrounds and culture. As I teach about Mexica, Zapotec, Purapecha, Maya, Tongva, <laughs> the land we're on, and other indigenous groups, I hear students tell me about their families and the languages their families speak and how they were so ashamed to talk about it before. Uh, I hear students at rallies <laughs> when I would go um, supervise at the Azusa High School rallies, <laughs> and I was shocked, honestly, the, the first times I went. Um, and I would hear newcomer students from different countries in Central America speaking their indigenous languages and wondering how this fits in, right? Because indigenous people aren't a thing of the past. And that is exactly what I teach in my class, right? Uh, still very much alive, the culture is alive um, or else we wouldn't be doing things like, like danza. Um, and so I wanna cultivate this sense of pride, but I wanna put this mascot into context. So when this mascot was chosen, it was 1956. <laughs> This is following Mendez versus Westminster in 1947 that desegregated schools in California, Brown versus Board in 1954 that desegregated students in the entire United States. Azusa High School opened just two years later uh, after Brown versus Board in 1956. There was a Mexican school in Azusa not long before this, right? And so the panel that picked the mascot in 1956, according to the Azusa Herald, Met, uh, went through three choices before settling on an Aztec. Uh, and it wouldn't take much to see what the makeup of this committee might've been. Uh, and they didn't choose it to honor uh, the Mexica or indigenous or Mexican culture. And what I do know um, about our students is that we need to give them a sense of empowerment. We need to give them something to unite around. And so I think with the schools combining, it would be good to let the students decide on a new mascot. Thank you, Dr. Sanchez. Next, we have Kiana Martinez. Hello, hi, um, I'm Kiana and I'm with uh, CAD 911 of San Gabriel Valley. Um, thank you to everyone who's spoken today on the, on the topic of the, the mascots and how it is, you know, highly disrespectful to the the people who are still um, here, the Tongva people. Um, it's it's long overdue, and it can be uh, the Zuza uh, school district that sets the precedent for uh, the surrounding cities, who many of them also have uh, a similar uh, cultural appropriation. Uh, of their mascot and, and or their school name. And so I feel this can be, uh, it's something that could be good for the community uh, to show that we uh, uh, love and support the indigenous people here um, and we honor 
them and we want to do better to be a better be better allies um and uh thank you to dr sanchez i don't know you but beautifully spoken and i think that it, it it's can be seen as an opportunity to bring the students together to come up with something that they feel represents our uh this this community that we've created or been brought in into um and also of course bringing in any uh wisdom from the Tongva people that we can and so I do think it could be an amazing opportunity and you know a, a, a beautiful thing to to do um to set a precedent uh so I highly urge you know the 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 board to you know think about their morals and what we need to do to uh be a more just community thank you for your time thank you Kiana Next, we have Joe. Thank you, um, Azusa Unified School District Board, uh, especially for giving us more time. Um, I wanna give thanks to the indigenous people, the Tongva of Asusangna. I'm here currently sitting in my car on Aksunga, and also known as El Sereno. Uh, shout out to our cousins, our distant cousins out there who are attending this meeting and all of us who are reclaiming our indigenous roots. When I was in sixth grade, uh, a student asked the teacher, why, why did the Native Americans get their land stolen? And the teacher just said, because they weren't civilized. I want to acknowledge that the school has that much power in building communities and also upholding white supremacy. We have a chance today and tonight to start healing, to let our ancestors, their deaths, their silence, the genocide, to not be done in vain, that we can honor their lives today through school, through education, through community. So I hope that th tonight we can reflect on that and that you guys as the board can reflect on how much influence you have we have a time right now where there's many of us in that diaspora who are reclaiming our roots and are dealing with a lot of challenges right now, not just COVID, but we're dealing with climate change. We're dealing with economic collapse. We're dealing with a lot. And so I want us to kind of come together and hopefully the students, especially to hear their, their young hearts come together and figure out what does it mean to be a community? <laughs> You got Ronald McDonald as the mascot for McDonald's. You got Mickey Mouse as the mascot for Disney. Our people are not mascots. Our people are not brands or logos. You've already seen it with the Redskins getting the, the Redskin mascot being taken out. So it's, this is nothing new. And you, we're going to see more of these things. We're going to see more of these statues of white supremacists coming down. And with that, we're going to see more healing. And I, and, and, and I want to shout out to all those folks out there, too, who have been part of this effort in regenerating communities. So thank you for listening, and thank you for letting us share our stories. And I hope we move forward and begin our healing journey. I hope. Thank you, Joe. Next, we have Teme. Please uh, correct me if I pronounce that incorrectly. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, welcome. Hi, it's Teresa May Chuck. My first name was cut off. <clears throat> Dear Azusa Unified Board members, this is my 15th teaching high school English in the Los Angeles Unity High School, Holden Cougars. My life has been dedicated to nurturing the minds and spirits of our youth and future generations. I urge you to please change the Aztec mascot for Azusa High School and the other schools as it is disrespectful to the native communities and perpetuates stereotypes. Negative stereotypes of native peoples have been perpetuated since colonization. 
We are at a point in history and time where we know better. Cultural appropriation is harmful. Using cultures as logos or mascots is exploitative. As an institution of learning, schools have a great responsibility to the community and to our youth. Someone exploited on logos and people dressing up as a school mascot that is supposed to represent a culture and people is disrespectful. It could have devastating effects on our youth and how they see themselves. In addition, the mascot image of Azusa High School and how it is represented during events misrepresents Native tribes and their traditional ceremonies. We are adults and our decisions determine and shape the future of our current youth and generations to come. We have the power to correct the wrongs done on this continent and to make our community a better and safer place for our native youth. In the past few years alone, we have witnessed the devastating effects of stereotypes on many diverse peoples of color. We could stop stereotypes, listen to the stories of our diverse communities and treat people with the humanity and dignity that they deserve. There is an opportunity here for a great and positive change. There is an opportunity here to have a new mascot for Sousa High School, one that is supported by the Sousa Native community on Tongva territory and led by the local Native community. Thank you for your time and consideration in resolving this urgent matter. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Next, we have Joanna Zong. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, but we have quite an echo. Okay, great. So my name is Joanna and I am a concerned member of the public. I'm voicing my concern and I'm urging you to listen to our community members who are sharing their lived experiences. Azusa High School should be a leader and set an example in the world. We just listened to community members who trusted the board with sharing their stories, their vulnerabilities and their family's histories. We need to listen to those who have been severely hurt and impacted by this mascot. It is time to step up. The world is watching and Azusa School District should lead by example. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Next, we have Rhonda. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, good evening. Um, my name is Rhonda and I am a, uh, actually a proud Gladstone alum. Um, sad to see that Gladstone's going to be closed. <laughs> I'm pretty sad about that. But, uh, I think really, um, I'm, and I sympathize with what all, uh, my, the previous speakers, uh, have been saying and talking about, but I think also one of the real issues is, is how mascots are selected. Uh, even though I'm a proud Gladstone alum, even the name gladiator is problematic. I mean, it's a killer for hire in an arena. If we think about that, even Gladstone, you know, so um, I think, um, I think there's a lot to be said for letting your students decide who the mascot is. I live in Northern Virginia and I know about, you know, I was happy when they got rid of the Redskins, the name, it was offensive. It's a racist name, Redskins, nation's capital. Um, but I think, um, I have to say, uh, I think this is a great opportunity to learn more about um, indigenous, Aztec, the culture, show people the proper way. I have to say, when I was growing up, um, I, I, I noticed, uh, from as a gladiator, you know, from Gladstone, that there was immense pride in being an Aztec. There was, it, people felt it, it was totally different than, I'm sorry, but you know, how it was in Gladstone. Um, so teach people the proper way about the history. Um, but um, I think um, that there, again, what people are saying, truth, I know people have been offended and so on by it, but there's a lot of people 
it gave them a sense of pride and identity and community there in Azusa that I never saw with my high school. So um, I think there's a balance. I think uh, definitely take the time to teach people, you know, the ethnic studies, all of that stuff. But realize that also a lot of people got some pride. I'm not indigenous, but I saw with myself, with my own eyes, how a lot of people were identified with being an, uh, an Aztec. And even those who weren't <laughs> indigenous or Aztec or whatever could see it and, 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 and felt the pride uh, that was there. So I think there's a way to do it. Doesn't have to be necessarily all or nothing, um, but um, you know, I, I don't, there's a lot, like I said, there's been a lot of hurt throughout the years and the centuries. I get that, I understand that totally, um, but you. you know, that's my say. Thank you, Rhonda. Next we have Eder. Good evening, everybody. Everybody can, I think I see my uh, mute icon uh, detecting sound. So, so yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Eder. I am, uh, I'm, um, I'm on my way to be an educator. Um, so, so I, I do spend at uh, this moment, I, I'm, I've been spending a lot of time with youth of our grades, particularly middle school and high school. Um, and currently I'm in my, sort of on, on a journey, right? to reclaim uh, the history that, you know, was never taught to us, that was sort of just kept as, as, a, side, as a side note in, our in my educational uh, journey. And part of that is um, me becoming, uh, being part of the, of, uh, of, of the, of Danza Azteca as well. So, <clears throat> so even though it's not, it's not, um, it's not, uh, I'm quite aware of the genocide and all the uh, the history of our of our people, what they've what they um, what has happened in 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 the in the in the, in the few hundred years of our of our existence. Um, <clears throat> well, I come here to basically I'm in support of of our, of this mascot being changed. Uh, now, just and I'm kind of backing in what Rhonda was saying is that um. For me, what, what I saw is basically a caricature, something that wasn't treated with respect. So it could have been, it could have been definitely in these last fifty years. So now I'd been correct and shown more respect, but but um, I believe like also students, sh students also <clears throat> should have a say on what what should represent them as well. So I definitely support a change in this uh, and what we have right now with the Asusa. Aztec as a mascot. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Have... Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Next, we have Justin Mendez. Hello. Hello, can Justin, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, good, e good evening, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. My name is Justin Mendez, uh, and I'm here to express my support in changing the mascot, um, and I think this is a, a serious issue because this is also the opportunity to create an empowering uh, symbol for our youth in the community instead of one that is, is mocking. And, and as we've heard from people in this community that it is uh, disrespectful to their heritage, to themselves, uh, and to their roots, to their indigenous families who, who the land belongs to. And it's, it's not new, right? As has been said, uh, the National Football League, the NFL, they changed their team and they did it with swift action, um, you know, to the, the Washington football team to, because they understood that the mascot was disrespectful. And you're hearing from the community that this is disrespectful. So I, I do believe that it is a, a, a proper and a great uh, action to Think about this mascot and create a, a, a symbol that, again, everybody in the community can, can stand behind. And this is a, a public school, so it should be serving the, the needs and the voices of the community. Uh, thank you for the time. That's all I have to say. 
Thank you, Justin. Next, we have Edgar Montes. Hello. Hello, Edgar. Hi, good evening. Good evening, uh, board president, vice president, board members. Good evening, everybody in attendance tonight and everybody listening in at home or watching through Zoom. Good evening to all. Uh, my name is Edgar Montes, and I'm the Rialto Unified School District Board of Education president. I've been a school board member for 11 years now. First got elected in 2010 by my community. I got reelected in 2014. I got reelected in 2018. And if God wants and if my community continues to support me, I'll be reelected this year in 2022. Our district's been through many controversial uh, issues and situations. Uh, this is nothing new. Um, many people have called in and spoken about, you know, the, um, the NFL and some other situations. Uh, this is the year 2022, and I truly believe we're in a time in our country, in our communities, where a lot of changes are happening for the better. Um, some people might be in support of the mascot, um, but obviously there's a great deal of people in your community and surrounding communities who um, uh, would like to change the name uh, respectfully for, for various reasons. And uh, I just wanted to call in and show my support for those people in your community and in my community and surrounding communities who believe it's time uh, to change the way people thought in 1956 uh, and, and, and really just stand up for what's right. You can't have it both ways. You can't, you can't say oh, it's okay to offend people. It's okay to disrespect people. It's okay to hurt people's feelings um, and be insensitive because other people, it makes them feel good. It makes them proud. Uh, we can't have it both ways. Our school district doesn't have uh, a mascot like this, nor uh, do I think our, our district would ever consider having one like this. And um, please uh, uh, take into consideration your community's concerns, your community's desires, and um, at the end of the day, hopefully uh, the, Real the uh, Azusa Board of Education can do the right thing for your school district and for your students and your community. Thank you. Thank you, Edgar. Next up, we have Caitlin Arianes. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Good evening, board members, superintendent, assistant superintendent, and the rest of the respective cabinet. I'm Caitlin Arianes, a junior at Gladstone High School, and I wanted to express my support for the rebranding of the Sousa High School Aztec mascot. As the mascot stands, it feels as though it is a caricature of Aztec and indigenous culture. Mascots are meant to be a symbol of pride, but how can we bear pride when we have corrupt something so sacred? Why do you claim to be for equality and equity, yet turn a blind eye at real issues in our district? I believe that in order to gain perspective on the subject, the board should listen to the actual people of indigenous descent who are speaking in front of you today. If you choose to neglect those who are speaking out, the least you can do is not neglect the people whose culture you are appropriating. So please keep in mind, we are watching. The community which you have neglected is watching. The decisions made forth today will be remembered and they certainly will be remembered on November 4th. All I ask is you keep your most important constituents in mind, your students, the future of this district, and most importantly, the Tongva tribe when making this decision. That is all, thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Next we have Sharon Lara Alton. Hello, my name is Sharon Lara Alton and I have been doing Danza Azteca for around a half of a year. And I have to say that it's changed my life. Um, I am an English teacher and a professor of English at Chafee College, and I work with students that are Indigenous from Indigenous communities that we all service. Um, and so what I want you to urge you today is to change the mascot, the Aztec mascot, because our culture is not your entertainment. I think I urge you to look at the voiceless in your community and give them a voice and proper representation. I urge you to listen to the community and change the mascot to something that represents Azusa Unified, that is strictly you, that lifts your community up. 
But I urge you to go a step further. I urge Azusa Unified to stop the excess accepted narrative of genocide that we're teaching our elementary school youth. We teach mission projects that normalizes the genocide of indigenous people, the people sitting in your homes, in the, your communities, in your schools. At what point are we gonna expect better from our educators than now? Your community is coming towards you, asking you to change these things just in a simple representation of a mascot, right? But yet we're sitting in the classes where, there be, where genocide of our people is being normalized. I really urge Azusa Unified to invest in educating their instructors in anti-bias and anti-racist -educa anti education and to take this a step further than a mascot because it's, it's more important than just a mascot. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Next, we have Salisa Loesa. Good evening. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's calling in and speaking and representing communities. Um, my, I think there has been voice for tonight. I also wanted to bring to the forefront the issue of Longfellow. I know the decision on Longfellow will also be made today. Um, and I know that there are many different ways and opportunities for the early childhood education programming to continue thriving in our district. I think one of the largest points I wanted to make today was the high schoolers are getting their space so that way they can thrive at their developmental my milestone milestones that they are at. Middle school is also getting their individual space so that they can thrive in their individual milestones. I would love to see our district also providing the unique space that Longfellow offers to allow our early children, to allow our, our babies to thrive, to feel that support, the community, the collaboration that has already been long, long time successful and standing, and instead learn how we can duplicate the success. Um, and that is it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Salisa. Next, we have Mercedes. But President, it looks like Mercedes has lowered her hand. Okay, Mercedes, feel free to raise your hand if if you inadvertently um, took it down. We'll move on then to Rafael Saldana. Good evening, people. My name is Rafael Saldana. I'm at Ansante in the area of Los Angeles. Um, I am from Peru. I'm Native American from Peru. And when I had the, uh, asked the community to embrace me into this beautiful world dance, I knew that there were certain code of ethics that we should follow when it came to putting on the regalia. And um, that's the same thing I'm gonna ask the board of uh, Azusa to change the mascot. While I know there's a lot of uh, history of um, people being hurt by like the misuse of mascot, we can move forward to new things or a brighter future, changing the mascot because there's more than just a regalia. There's a lot of history. The history is not a mascot, like a lot of my brothers and sisters say on this meeting. And uh, I ask you kindly to remove the mascot because there's a certain, there, uh, the Aztec warrior carries a lot of history, a lot of pain and a lot of uh, history with it. And therefore I ask to remove it kindly. And like, many of them say uh, build awareness with a, a lot more educational options about what it is, what an Aztec was more than just an individual with feathers and in and, uh, and an outfit, you know? So I'm sorry, I'm not the best speaker, but I just wanna be the more voice heard and support all my brothers. And, and I understand your pain and I'm in solidarity, I stand with you here. And um, I'm here to hopefully ask to the decision to move forward for a better future. Thank you for your time board. Thank you, Rafael. I do believe we have Mercedes back. Mercedes, you may unmute your mic. Yes, good evening, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, first of all, I wanna uh, thank all the indigenous um, leaders and students and people who are recognizing uh, their roots and um, also for the board to bring on this issue. It's an issue that has been occurring uh, 
it's um, been going on for some time and you know a lot of uh, professional organizations and high schools have taken on this issue and it's unfortunate that um, yes the Aztecs uh, in a lot of ways have not properly represented uh, the the name of of that particular indigenous group of the Aztecs and what we have to look also to at, at the demographics and we see that um, there is a large number growing more and more every day to the awareness of our indigenous roots. And even here in the uni uh, Sousa Unified School District, I was fortunate that for the last five years I have been given, uh, been, I have been given to uh, Gladstone Elementary and Center uh, Indigenous Ethnic Study presentation. And um, I've noticed that um, in the last couple of years, that there is a, an increasing number of indigenous people that speak other languages and, uh, and uh, Spanish and English is actually their second and third languages. And there are a lot of, they speak a lot of their indigenous languages and, um, and they're attending uh, Asusa Unified. And so the question is that, how do you make that turn to properly represent um, these, these, all these different indigenous nations that are rising up, these people that are becoming aware of their indigenous roots and how to, how to uh, allow them to be able to um, grow and, and, and understand uh, the education that they're getting in a public school district. And so I think that that's the question. In part, the answer is, um, with the ethnic studies that have been proposed and how to how to be able to move from what the mascot has been represented as a racist stereotype and how to incorporate um, the different, many different beliefs of indigenous peoples in the Americans from the native people here uh, where we have our name of Asusa come from to the many from Central uh, and Mexico and South America uh, and North America. And so that's the, the question is how do then we are able to teach, properly teach indigenous history in this in this country, of this country and in the Americas. And so I think in part, in part the answer is the, the ethnic studies programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Joaquin Steve. We go. Hello, my name is Joaquin Chavez, and uh, I live out here in the San Fernando Mission area on Tatavian land. And I live across the street from the mission, and they also just removed uh, a statue. Uh, Father Serra was removed. And uh, I think it's uh, very important that we continue um, enriching our community with culture, history of our indigenous people. Uh, I also have a Danza Azteca group in North Hollywood with my father, and we teach our children, our youth, our elders, our community about our traditions, about our culture, the importance of our culture, and the real representation of the Mexica and the Aztecas. And uh, having these mascots represent, you know, uh, the Aztecas or the Mexicas is as uh, all of we all heard, it's it's false information. It's misleading. It's disrespectful, um, and um, we find it very you know hurtful to be uh, to having our children witness these false um, false narratives of what our culture is. And so, at this point, I just want to extend my gratitude to the school board for extending the time to listen to our community. Thank you for extending the time to listen to us. I also want to thank the community for stepping into this space and expressing their thoughts and their opinions and their feelings about how they feel, because this is a very important issue and it's a very important turning point in our history. Thank you. Thank you, Joaquin. Next, we have Carlos Goitia.
Good evening. Um, first and foremost, I uh, I want to acknowledge that we are on Tangva land, stolen land. Um, my name is Carlos Goitia. I'm a regional leader in the Pomona Valley. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Pomona. I am an elected official. I am a director for Three Valleys Municipal Water District. I'm calling in behalf of support of all those that are have called in in support of the name change for Azusa High School. The, um, all the comments were great comments. Uh, as one who identifies as indigenous myself, uh, I, I never understood. Uh, I always knew that growing up, I always knew that I was indigenous, but we were displaced, you know, being a lifelong resident of, of the city of Pomona, um, finding out through, uh, through my DNA and confirming that I, I, my ancestry is of the Apacheria, Chiricahua Mescalero Apaches. And uh, I take pride in that and doing a lot of research and understanding my culture and uh, it, it, we, I, I just want to say to the Board of Education, we are the leaders of today. It's incumbent on us. It's our responsibility to make the decisions that reflect us. I, 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 I know that your board is, is, is diverse, um, whether you identify as Latino, Mexicano, Indigenous, African American, you have a diverse board. Um, I take pride in being the first indigenous uh, indigenous person to sit on the board at Three Valleys. Uh, there are hard decisions that I have to make. I, there's one that recently I have made. I was the lone opposition uh, vote to off ramp a study and a project of drilling for water in in the Mojave Bonanza Springs area. Uh, these are hard decisions, but as, as electeds, it's incumbent on us to make the right decisions. So I implore you, I ask you to, to, to do the right thing and make the right decision in making that name change and respecting the cultures, the Tangva people. We in Pomona are, 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 are realizing the original name of Pomona, which is Tongva, which is Toibinya and Pimukanga, which are sisters of the Asuskanga uh, people. Um, we, we, we're bringing awareness to that. So thank you. And uh, thank you, board, for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Carlos. Next, we have Michael. Do we still have Michael in attendance? Uh, yes, we do. Michael, you may unmute your mic. Hello? Hello, can you Michael. Hear me? We can hear you. Yes, how much is it going to cost? About two, three million to change the name? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, we, you're able to speak freely for three minutes, but we do not respond. You do not respond. Okay, all the money they're going to waste for this, when they could be put it for the education for the children, since the coronavirus is keeping the children back, and may, we're behind now. All the children, all the school districts. We should be be fo focusing on that than just going and focus on a name. And all these people who are focusing on this, hey, let's get all the city to agree with it. Forget about all the outsiders. All the ones that went to school here should be the ones voting. Get the Aztec warriors to vote. Albert Sanchez, Larry, <clears throat> excuse me, Luna, all them guys. And let's see, let's everybody have a vote like that instead of getting these outsiders who come around. They don't live out here. Even if they, the ones who are speaking, I don't think they even went to school. Some of them probably went to school here. They just want to come put their two cents in. I honestly think we should go ahead and put all this education money, all this money they're going to charge to education our children better. I don't see what's the reason why we're worrying about this name, you know. To me, I think it's just a lot of waste of time and money. It's just like when you had the 
I mean, when we had that 20 million, they put air conditioners, they, they should have put the solar out there, it saved us some school's money. I really don't understand why they're complaining too much about a name. I mean, it's a name that's been there for years, should stay there for years. No one's never got offended from here until now. They sort of start whining about it. Just say, hey, leave it alone. Keep on going. Just be the Aztec warrior. They already changed the the mural. Complaining about that, they should put the old mural back. And the one that they have now. Then after that, you guys gonna have to change that too. And there you go, wasting money again. But I don't, I'm really disapproved on everything because we're over here sitting watching this, wasting time and money to me when it should be saying, hey, we're going to get the education for the children, get the pool for, this, for them so we could get some trophies and stuff from the people out there swimming and stuff. But that, that's not going to happen either because why? The coronavirus. But I hope the names can stay because she's been there for years. I don't know. What's a hold up on this thing is this downfall of waste of money again. That's all I got to say. And hopefully our mayor gets better and healthier. And all the children who need help, you guys should be building a program for them to be, you know, going for assistance or math, reading, writing, social studies, science, something where they need helping out the single parents that are struggling. That money could go to that too instead of this. But you know, change the name. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Next, we have Mazatzin Azteca Yolo Cali. Please correct me if I pronounce that incorrectly. Yes, uh, you pronounced it correctly. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. And, and uh, first of all, uh, yeah, first of all, I, I want to say that I agree a lot with uh, what Michael had to say. I could, I could, I could feel him. I feel I, I can feel it coming. He's speaking from his heart, and, uh, and and many people have a lot of connection to to things the way they are, uh, and and also I, I also have to say that I resemble that remark. I am an outsider. <laughs> I, I do not live in the area, and um, however, as you can tell by my identity here, that I'm presenting Masasin Azteca Yolokali. It means uh, Masasin comes from the Aztec word that means deer. And it means either venerable deer or it's a term of endearment, uh, little deer. And Azteca Yolokali means Azteca Yolokali means house of the Aztec heart. So it's very uh, serious situation uh, to understand the meaning of, of some of these words that we have here, and that is part of the culture that now is, um, as we know, uh, one of the I think it's the majority uh, what they call minority cultures that that exist here in this country and um but my dedication has been to to teaching people to become aztec teaching people to become aztec as the aztec word comes from two words one is astli and it means instrument to harmonize and the other is uh, tecat which means a person so an aztec is a person who becomes an instrument of harmony and that is the culture and the tradition that many and most of the people that preceded me were talking about in their presentations that I agree also with all of them that spoke before me, very honorable and very respectful. And um, so being an Aztec is, is, is really not impossible. And, and I, I heard, I heard uh, some people have said that not everybody can be an Aztec. Well, it, 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 it's not really a nationality or a place of origin. It's actually a way of being, right? An instrument of harmony. And right now, I, I believe that I will add my voice to those who are asking you to take this name Aztec or take the mascot concept of Aztec off of, uh, of the school district in order to create that harmony, you know? And maybe, maybe, maybe little by little, we can learn to become Aztec, but at the moment, you know, we need to have the harmony. So I add my name to removing the, the mascot. Kamati, thank you very much. On this beautiful day of the reed, uh, eight reed, and the reed is called Akat, 
in Gaya by Tesca y Poca, and that means the consciousness and the memory. So thank you very much. Talaso Kamati. Thank you, Masatsin. Next, we have Alex Munoz. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so um, I'm currently a senior at Azusa High School. And um, basically, what I agree with what Michael said, that it's going to be very expensive to change. And there's already numerous expenses that we have to cover for high school. Like, we can't even get our pool fixed. And we want to change the Aztec mascot. Like, where are your priorities at? Um, and not just add to that. It's just, sure, we can change, like, maybe the song, you know, the, the, the way we dress, the, the spirit day, spirit rally, whatever it is. We can, we can do that easy. It's just, like, out of all things we're prioritizing right now during a pandemic, changing the mascot is one and, and not like providing better education for us students. And uh, I just think that it's, you have your priorities all mixed up and that uh, the priorities should be the students and not the image that they portray out to others that others might get offended. Um, Okay, and I do hear the side of it being um, indigenous people. They want their dignity. They, after so many years of, of just stealing their culture, and, and I get that, and that's why I want, uh, I support uh, making the Aztec more accurate or whatever it can be. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Lika, do we have anyone else with their hand raised? We have no other hands raised. Thank you. Then we, we will move on to 4.0 general functions and specifically 4.1 discussion and decision of reorganization, school mascot and colors for Azusa High School. I, I believe to, to start things off, uh, Ms. Jamal, you would have for us some, some information and some, some details on uh, some of the potential costs associated with this change. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Board President. Um, so we did um, receive information from legal counsel, um, which identifies which are the recommended and preferred funding sources. Um, it was concluded, um, one, as we all knew, general fund um, would um, be able to absorb any, not absorb any we have financially, but um, it is a fund that has the uh, most allowable expenditures. Um, we have our developer um, fee fund, which is Fund 25 in which those funds can be used for modernization, um, can be used to identify going to our schools due to school closure or reorganization where we are projecting an increase in enrollment. Um, we have our fund 40, which is the Rosedale fund. Um, that is funds that we use for capital um, expenditures, um, such as tang um, tangible items that'll be affixated to the building, modernization pool. <clears throat> um, we did also talk about how we possibly uh, also, the turf overlay. Um, we have our fund 21, which is our bond fund for Measure K, which we can use for any modernization project that we have currently on the list. So we have four <coughs> funding sources. I'm sorry, <coughs> four funding sources in which that we have available. Um, but for the topic of rebranding, um, fund one um, is the main one. Um, but we can get some rebranding. Um, expenditures out, which would be like redoing a turf, um, painting, um, if you wanted to redo the pool, the basketball courts, but for items such as new uniforms um, um, for our different sport events, those would not qualify for those funds beyond the general fund. <clears throat> I have a question. <clears throat> My question, Mr. Mall, is um, I don't see anything on this list that shows um, the grant writer, if the grant writer, um, from I heard in the past, that your she was going to go out and look for grants that had to do with uniforms, or is there any grants? Or I'll take, I can take that one. Uh, we have contacted uh, our grant writing uh, company uh, to see if there was any, if there are any grants uh, to help with any of these associated costs. Um, there's one grant uh, that they definitely uh, have identified and they keep looking. Um, 
And so we can definitely continue on that route uh, to apply for uh, potential uh, grants, uh, but nothing concrete. We haven't been awarded anything or anything like that. Right now it's just discovery and an application if that's, that's the route we want to go. Do, do we have a sense of the potential timeline on that? Uh, not all grants, uh, but most grants uh, do come with uh, timelines on when they are um, announced and when deadlines are. The one grant that we are currently looking at is not one of those grants. It actually has an open, uh, just an open um, timeline. And so we can move forward uh, with that particular one. And again, we'll, they'll continue to look for grants that match up to this. And, and I have another question also regarding, we did receive a list regarding the uniforms that the students at Azusa High um, from you know, volleyball, tennis, softball, cross country, and so forth um, for boys and girls. And I noticed that a lot of these, um, the track, they haven't had a new uniform since 15 years. You know, everything's five years or, or, or more. You know, eight years, six years. Um, so how often do they change uniforms? Or, or where do they get the funds and when they're going to change their uniforms? I can take that question. Um, so the uniforms are purchased with an athletic budget, which is part of uh, general funding that the uh, sites uh, receive. And also with funding from fundraising from the uh, teams. And then um, just one more question regarding, I know that we did use the cap in 2017 for uniforms for the mariachi program and also uh, band. That's correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what uh, goal was that and what action was it that we used in, in the cap? I want to say it's, um, I'd have to look at it, um, board member Rodriguez Pena. Uh, but yeah, we do have, as a matter of fact, in our LCAP, we do have under our music budget uh, for the LCAP, we do have um, uniforms as part of, um, of that funding that we have a built in. Thank you. Music. You're welcome. Any, any of my colleagues have anything to add or questions to ask? I would like to introduce myself. My name is Gabriela Arellanes. And uh, I, I want to thank everyone who has showed up tonight in person and online. I appreciate for all of you guys that are watching, we received over 30 emails, 30 emails and support of this mascot change, all of them. Comes down to one thing. There's so many issues right now as school board members that we are addressing. One of the students from Gladstone High School said this was a long time coming, Ms. Ms. Althea uh, Teo. We knew this back in 2019 before we even spoke about all this. When I brought it up at a school board meeting, we talked, you know, I said, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This, the whole change of the mascot is the elephant in the room. And it has not been since 2019. It's been for centuries. We need to address more. Yes, we do need to address more important issues. But. But it is the mascot issue, among others, that prohibits people from seeing indigenous people as people. It is so easy to say, oh, it's just a mascot. Oh, we can spend money on other things. But according to 538 analysis, hundreds of schools across the country still use Native Americans as their team mascots. Monikers widely seen as racist and dehumanizing to the Native American community. There are people who will downplay the importance of the issue and say, oh gosh, don't you have better things to worry about? Your priorities are mixed up. Well, 
Dehumanization is, I think, the very root of all the other issues that we face. For decades, advocates for Native American rights have been working relentlessly to convince the teams, schools, to change their names, filing lawsuits to protest and applying the pressure on teams and their sponsors. Right now, we, as Sousa Unified School District, are re reconfigurating and have the opportunity to make this happen. Are we going to wait for the lawsuit? Or are we going to do it now? That's our choice. That's a choice we're going to have to make tonight. Bar Sharp, president of the National Congress of American Indians, who leads the country's oldest and largest American Indian and Alaskan Native tribal government organization. The widespread of Black Lives Matter protests ushered in a national debate about race and racism in America. One that finally, finally included the rights of Native, American, Native Americans. We all know that this day would come. This should not be a surprise to us. The moment has just been an incredible sacred moment. Bringing this country together to advocate for the rights of indigenous people and to be an ally and partner with others that are disenfranchised. The continued use of Native American mascots in education has a long and harmful history. These mascots perpetuate racial stereotypes and cultural misappropriation, negatively impact the identity and psychological development of indigenous children and create a negative learning environment for all children. For these reasons, Teach for America publicly opposes the use of native mascots and supports the removal from K through 12 schools. Now, we here in Azusa have a partnership with the Western Justice Center. We went through the training. What the Western Justice uh, Center envisions, this is their vision. They envision a world in which communities are healed, united, and transformed through conflict resolution, education, and restorative practices rooted in equity, justice, and opportunity. How can we say that we support something, partner up, hire consultants to be teaching our, we're starting that right now, teaching our teachers, right? We, we have one class in each of the high schools. We have one teacher. We need to do better because we know better. It's about education or the lack of education that makes it so hard to adapt or change. This is not about Oh, I, I'm an Aztec or I'm a gladiator. This is about doing what is right. Tonight, I humbly and strongly request we find the funds, which we now see that we can do this, to repair and do what is right for our children and future generations. Azusa School Board members, the time is now. If not now, when? Thank you. I have something to add. Or remember what right, right. So, um, I also um, piggyback on on statement of Board Member Radianis. I think the best way to honor the tradition of both high schools is to equally move forward with the new beginning. It is difficult enough for us uh, to experience change. Let us not choose a school. Let us grow one school as one. By merging into the name we would send a message that we have not chosen one school over the other. The um, Aztec, uh, Azusa Aztec mascot is culturally insensitive to the Native American community. We have many speakers here, and I want to thank you all for being here and people on Zoom. We, it was hour, almost hour and a half, but um, it, it was re really good, really interesting, and it also educated myself, and I really appreciate that. Regarding the change, um, the Aztec mascot and the logo for the following reasons. It is disrespectful and racist to the Native Americans. The, head, the headdress is a sacred object that is earned throughout the years of battle. The outfit they wear, they use it as a costume. The young lady that comes out as a warrior, she has a, a short skirt on and she comes out 
Now, what are we saying about the Native American women? That is disrespectful, even for myself. I am 59% Native American, and I also did my study. So I, I, I don't appreciate that. We are stereotyping the indigenous people. Schools and teams have changed their mascots, such as warriors, braves, Indians, redskins, chiefs, tomahawks, for the same reason. We're in the 21st century. Why are we acting like we're back in the 60s? I'm from the 60s, and, when, and, and, and I feel like I'm fighting for the same lucha all the time. It like never ends. Well, I feel myself as a board member can make a change and can end things that I was not able to do back in the 60s. Um, now's the time to unite the gladiators and the Aztecs as one. Let's make that change now. Thank you. Um, I'm okay with changing the name. I think I came into this meeting um, and I know for people who watched the last meeting, I'm feeling, really feeling that we could um, find ways to be, um, I would say, culturally sensitive with using the Aztec um, mascot. Um, but I think Dr. San Dr. Sanchez's comments um, really resonated with me, really thinking about, you know, when Azusa was a very different place when it was, when in 1956, when we created it and knowing that I can only guess as, I mean, obviously we can't know their, what they were thinking in their minds, but who was, who were the decision makers at that time who was sitting on this board? Um, and thinking about the systemic racism that we've all talked about on this board and talked about how we're going to address um, really make, I think, um, help me come to that conclusion that it does make sense, even though it is, it will be an expense and it will be coming out of our general fund most likely, I think, it's important for us to be able to have um, even our out, outward facing icons, our messages reflect the internal ethic that we want all of our community and our students to possess. So, um, so I agree. Board member Bo, do you have anything to add? Thank you, board president. Just a few comments. Um, I can say that all each of us and as a as one unified board, we have a lot of responsibility. We have a responsibility to our stakeholders to be fiscally responsible. We have responsibility to our students and families to provide a rich, rigorous education. And there are always, there are always going to be a variety of competing priorities. But I think what, when I think about education, I think about the responsibility we have as educators to apply a very deliberate critical thinking lens to everything we do. And for me, the, the how and, and, and the why is just as important as the what. Um, I think we've heard from the community tonight, both in person, online, and in the variety of our email communications that there are a lot of ways to approach what we're doing in terms of um, consideration of renaming the mascot for Azusa High School. And I think that there are some really interesting and innovative ways to achieve, um, achieve what we want, to achieve and promote an inclusive environment that's respectful of a very rich pan-ethnic Native American heritage. Um, there are very, a lot of ways to continue to improve and strengthen our liberal arts curriculum in the K-12 spectrum. And I will also think that um, as Ms. Jamal's team has put together, there are ways that we can be creative you know, with, our, with our budget and be fiscally responsible. So I think what um, you know, the approach that I'm championing is that there are ways to do you know, say yes and, and not instead of either or. And so I, I'm hoping that we can work together tonight to find ways to achieve that yes and compromise that's gonna enable us to reach our goals and really fulfill our mission as a district. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and, and the other dynamic that I wanted to bring in, in onto the table is um, identifying the actions we're going to take as well as the timeline, right? And, and perhaps decoupling the actions from the timeline and, and deliberating on those as separate items will allow us to have greater clarity about what we're doing rather than feeling 
pressure that it happen, needs to happen tomorrow. Of course, it needs to have a specific deadline and we need to hold ourselves accountable to that deadline. But I offer that to the group um, as a tool to help us parse out not only the what and the why, but the how and the when. Thank you. Thank you, board member Bo. I will add a couple, just a couple comments. Um, a good, a good friend of mine um, kind of stated a, a proverb to me and 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 said that uh, the best time to to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. And I and I can't help but think about that when we when we think about the the situation that's in front of us now. Um, yeah, hearing uh, Dr. Sanchez, you share and and talk about just the the, the realities and 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 the history of of how those decisions were made and. Uh, and, and when that was, and, and the makeup, and, and even looking around this table and seeing, and and with board member Bo online, seeing the uh, the expanded representation that I can that I can only imagine exists as compared to to, to back then. Um, I think that there has been continued learning and continued understanding of of uh, the, the the impact that these types of decisions have on on people and on and on culture. Um, and so with that. Um, I, I also um, would, would look at what's in front of us and recognize that, yes, we need to continue to be fiscally re responsible. We need to look at how we utilize our funds to ensure that we're, we're, we're using those funds for um, our, uh, the, our students and, and their education and, and the, the resources and, and, and what they have available to them and, and, and their environments. And um, kind of going along with that um, environment and their education, I, I, I see this. I would also agree that. Um, now is a time for us to look at and address um, this matter. La last thing I'll say is these, these types of conversations can somehow be controversial. And, and I want to say, I think it's always important that we, we look at the, the individuals who are impacted by these decisions and we consider the impact on them as, as, as opposed to, uh, above and beyond uh, uh, higher and louder than, than the voices of those who um, are are not as directly affected, and their their culture is not being um, uh, appropriated or 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 misrepresented. Who who speak on behalf of um, those whose culture is, and so um, I, I think just kind of hearing what my colleagues have said, um, it, it, I'm 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 grateful to be a part of a of a, of a board who has has learned and um, has listened and is continuing to to, to learn and listen. Any additional questions, comments? Um, I will note then we'll, we'll entertain a, um, a motion here then in, in, a, in a moment. Uh, I will add that it does call for uh, mascot and colors um, for um, Azusa High School. So um, I didn't hear anyone really speak on colors, uh, but, but that's, that's also worth, um, worth noting. One of the things that um, I have a comment on that, that um... I heard tonight was, you know, to, to get the community involved and, and especially the students. I heard the students that spoke tonight, um, they want to get involved, making them be part of this decision and include them to be part of this decision um, would would benefit, um, would benefit them. So and, are you saying the timeline should be this school year since those, they're seniors, right? Is, is Right. Juniors and seniors. Juniors and seniors. Well, I would so I would ask. Um, so Arturo, if we were going to rebrand, right? How much lead time would you need to be able to do all that work? Like, let's say if we're our target is fall of twenty twenty three, right? That's our target date of consolidation. So, how much lead time do you do you need? So I think um, if we're um, hearing some of the the, the the comments on uh, balancing and being fiscally responsive, but also uh, making the right uh, decisions. Um, and um, I think I echo the sentiment that uh, this this can be a community involvement um, a type of um, uh, process that uh, really gets voices into uh, into this. Um, and I think that if we um, if we have the mindset of, um, as an example, just hearing that if the vote is tonight, yes, we're going to change the mascot and the colors of Azusa High School. 
Um, and we have the mindset of uh, implementation uh, that is phased in. We can we can accomplish the fiscal responsibility uh, because we we will have uniforms right now. We will have stuff that have Azusa High School that don't have the mascot. And so the things that do have the mascot, right, we can move a little bit quicker. Um, so I think that if we if a decision is rendered tonight, uh, we can uh, get right on. Uh, a process, uh, lay out a process, uh, share that with the Board of Education uh, in terms of how we think. Um, I believe we have uh, a couple of uh, products or software things that are coming up that can help us uh, to get uh, community involvement. Um, and so uh, we can we can come back with what that what that would look like uh, to the Board of Education. But I think we have we have uh, some time. The the big ones, really, like the the big big ones. Uh, here are going to be um, the turf. Um, we believe, depending on the decision, uh, we so um, let me clarify what that means. Let's pretend we kept the colors but only changed the mascot. As an example, if the community said that, then that actually um, gets a, a get, gets a quicker turf uh, versus we're changing the colors and the mascot, and which which is all fine. Uh, but that's really the the big one. Uh, some of the murals and then the um, the gymnasium, uh, the gymnasium uh, floor are really Latasha. Those are really the the big ones. I don't see the marquee as a as a big time time one. The the big ones I would say are the turf, the floor in the gym, and any mm -hmm. not even painting, just the the logo work. Yeah. So I don't I don't see a, a big time constraint. I just have a question regarding when you mention the colors. So as of tonight, our vote is to to decide on change of mascot and colors. Uh, correct. But we don't have to, right? And that's what I'm. That, we can that's, defer, but we can defer that to a a process. I think what I heard Arturo you say is that um, if we give you direction to move forward, this is this year, you can, we can give you direction to go and develop and and develop a proposed process. Correct. Right how we're going to do community engagement, what kind of committee is going to be, have the makeup of the committee, and then you would bring that back to us? Correct. I'm, I'm good with that. Can you clarify what you just said, please? Yeah, so so if we voted tonight that uh, we, we are fine with changing the mascot and the colors of Azusa High School, right. uh, we would right away uh, get to work on a process and a timeline of how we're going to involve our stakeholders to give input and voice. So, she's talking about a committee. So correct. Do, the committees would be the stakeholders in the community, like like chamber or uh, who are we talking about? Um, right now, I don't know, but I, I'm thinking it's not a mock committee. It's a it's a big it's a big um, input and voice. Um, and just to further, let's pretend that if we're not deciding today what that mascot is and those colors are correct. Right. So I'm what I'm suggesting is that once we hear the voice it could turn out to be that the mascot is changed to x but the colors like we like the 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 the, the voice is like the colors so they want to keep the colors but they just want to change the mascot and that we should honor that and be okay with that unless the board's saying no definitely 100 percent no the, the mascots must change and the colors must change but, but um, uh, right here at Stacy, we're supposed to change colors and mascot. I mean, just, I mean, that's what I'm reading. And I thought that's what our discussion, but now we're saying that we're allowing the community or whoever committee. Kids, students. Colors. So mm -hmm. what are we, it, what are we I disagree with for? that. I think that we're going to have that vote today for mascot and colors, that we stick to it and that we change the mascot and colors and do not give that to the community and give only the, um, the Master. choice of color, it's a different color. We're going to change the color and change the mascot. Just just to be super clear, maybe Carlos looks like you, you'll want to lean in. As, but looking at 4.1 says discussion and decision of, of, in essence, school mascot and color. So, so that invites a discussion and a decision of two things, school mascot and colors. So we may, whatever the board decides, we may decide um, that we, we do not want to send that out to, to, to be considered. Or we can say that we do want it to be sent out to this committee for, for consideration. But I, 
But I see that we have we we have a couple options in front of us. Carlos, did you have? I agree. I think the board can do one or both. So the board can act to just change our uh, to change the mascot today and defer the issue of the colors. The board could also take action to change the colors, and then through the process, it may be that the original colors are readopted by the board. So there could be an opening that the board could say, we want to move forward with an open process for a brand new mos mascot and an open process for brand new colors, get community input, and then ultimately it may be that the original colors are readopted. So the board has a lot of discretion in how it acts. Carlos, if I could ask for a clarification, right, just to, to continue on this, on this conversation, uh, the board may uh, elect to say, uh, we vote to change uh, the mascot and the colors, and we will leave it up to the stakeholders and the process uh, to determine what the mascot's going to be and the colors are going to be. Correct. They can also, just based on this conversation that just happened right now, they can say everything I just said, but through that process, the, the, the mascot must be changed and the colors must be changed. We will not accept the, the, the current colors that exist right now. Yes, the board can take that action as well. And, the, and those are the, again, those are the wishes of the board. So I'm happy to make a motion with the first scenario that you just mentioned, right? Where we would vote to change the mascot and then defer to you to develop a pro or, um, and then give you direction to develop a process for, for a community, either a committee, well, a process that we would ultimately adopt as a board. So not saying do it, go, go off and do it. Um, that would um, have, have a, whatever vehicle it is, look at options for and recommendations for a mascot and the color. But if we as a board want to separate the votes, I can do it. I can do a vote just on mascot first. And just for the sake of clarity, would you, would you mind concisely restating your motion? So my motion is that we, uh, my motion is that we um, take action to change the mascot of Azusa High School. Um, and and send, how would you say it? And, def, and create a process for community engagement to determine what that new mascot will be and, and corresponding colors. That is my motion. There's moved by board member Cruz Gonzalez. Is there a second? I will, I will second that motion. Is there any additional discussion? I would like to challenge the motion with a different motion. And, and if you're looking to amend the original amend. motion, so yes. there would be a motion to amend? Motion to amend the original motion. I would like to go ahead and since we've gone this far and we've spoken and being able to reconfigure, I think it is justly that we must change by motion to that we must change the mascot and the colors together to something new. Second. So this amended motion then is on the floor. Any, any additional discussion for the amended motion? Uh, um, I, I agree with that for, for the following reasons. You know, if, you know we, we're speaking about merging the schools, merging the colors. So it is a new beginning. So it is going to be totally new. You know, because you stick with the colors and there's still some there. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, as a board member 10 years, if I go to Azusa High and I'm wearing red, they're like, oh my God, Yolanda, why are you wearing red? Okay. I mean, I'll go to Gladstone High and I'm wearing blue. You can't wear blue. I have to see what I'm going to wear before I go to school. So I think the color is very, very important. I, I'll, my, I mean, for staff and for students. My two cents that I'll, that I'll add is um, I see us again. We're, with this, we're having a conversation and we're making a decision on behalf of, of individuals that we're inviting into a conversation that can make decisions for themselves. But and we so, are the board, excuse me, board president, but we are the board. I, I recognize that. And in the process that, that was one, one process that we can, that we can look at is saying to our community, what do you want? What it, it's what, what we are saying is as the board, it, it is, we are allowed to engage them on what, 
what does our community want and what makes sense and what is feasible and, and provide parameters that say using the Aztec as a mascot is, is an unacceptable option. But as far as colors, if our, if our community comes back and says we, and, and, um, that we do not want to keep the same colors, then the, the original motion, not the amended motion, gives, the, gives that option for, uh, to be considered. If they say that they, I forgot what I said, whatever the opposite of that is, then they also provide that option. I see this motion as, as eliminating choice and, and, and eliminating options that, are, that our community has to decide for themselves. And so that's why I, I would be in favor. Of, I, would, I would not be in favor of uh, the amended motion. Board Member Bo, did you have anything to add? Not at this time. Okay, so then we will we'll do a, if I'm not mistaken, we'll do a hand vote on the amended motion, um, which if, if that passes, it becomes the official vote um, that we'll, we'll take online. Um, board Member um, Rodriguez-Pena? Yes, the amend, amended. Amended motion, yeah. Yes. Board Member Bo? No. Board member um, Cruz Gonzalez? No. Board member Arianes? Yes. And I, board member Greer, am also a no. So the motion fails um, three, uh, two, three no's to two yeses, uh, which brings back the original motion that uh, board member Cruz Gonzalez stated, which is that we are defining that the mascot, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the motion that was on the floor was defining that the mascot must change but um, kind of allowing for a process that will that that could include the community and our our staff uh, determining that the colors could remain the same or that the colors could change. I would like to go ahead and amend the, the first motion again, and that is, I would like to go ahead and um, have two separate votes. I am not comfortable voting the mascot and colors since the first uh, amend motion was not carried on. So I would like to go ahead at this time and amend that and motion to go ahead and split the school mascot and the colors in two separate votes. So it's easier if I just retract my motion as long as my second agrees and I'll just um, I'll do an initial motion just motioning that we take action to change the mascot at Azusa High. That's, so is there a second for that motion? My second. second. So we'll, we will uh, the, the second will be board member Rodriguez Pena. And then any additional discussion? I would like to go ahead um, and vote online for the mascot. Well, and do the hand I can, if I can back up just one second here, where I think we, we had a motion to essentially bifurcate the original motion. Board member uh, Cruz Gonzalez was correct that she could withdraw her original motion and, and her second agreed. So in the way I'm looking at it, board member Cruz Gonzalez, your, your original motion involving two issues now on. I withdrew that motion. Yeah, correct. correct. And so we don't we don't need to jump into discussion on that original main motion. I believe Board Member Cruz Gonzalez could have the floor and now make a new motion. I think I already made it, and there was already a second by Yolanda. So now okay. we're voting on that. And then and I would only include how, however, the mascot. With the the with voting online, the reason why we, why why we won't is because the we we're taking one item and we're splitting it into two, but our computer still has it as one item. So we'll have to take a hand vote on the first one and we'll have to take a computer vote because we because we split it up or we could take a either or. But we can't take the we can't take the online vote twice. And then it's just clear. It's it's reflected in the minutes, right? Regardless of which order. And so what I'm. I'm asking is that we take the mascot vote online and that we do the colors by hand vote. Got it. If yep. that's OK, Mr. President. Sure. Thank you. Cruz Gonzalez, second by board member Rodriguez Pena. And who is the second on the new? Yolanda. Thank you. And we'll call the vote. And the motion passes uh, five to zero, which leaves us still with the, the matter of colors uh, that is that is in front of us. Is there a motion on the floor? What is the motion? Well, I would just suggest that we don't take action on the second item. Or do we need to take action to send it to the committee? I think I think it's implied, right? 
can, you can, the board by consensus can also direct staff or the board president can direct staff to come up with a plan to bring it back to a subsequent meeting or the board act vote. If it's okay, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to um, direct the superintendent to include in the process of renaming the mascot to also include what in whatever that process, stakeholder engagement process, um, um, recommendations on the colors of the school. Can, can I please ask that, that they also be divided? That is, the motion is just the colors of the school. You said mascot right now. No, no. I, in, I, what I said is in the engagement process of renaming the mascot also include the colors. I would like to go ahead and separate that. I believe the matters are already separated. So voted on okay, so I'll just, re already. I'll just re rename, I'll rephrase yeah. it. So well, I also, uh, my motion is that the committee that's put to, called, the committee that's convened or the pro stakeholder engagement process convened that that commit that that stakeholder engagement process also include recommendations on the colors of the high school of Azusa high school moved by board member Cruz Gonzalez we have a second so I have a clarifying question board president sure. so as the motion stands this gives the um the, com the committee or the, the process right, um, discretion to propose colors. They could be the same colors, they could be wildly different, is that correct? That's my understanding, board member. But board member Cook Gonzalez is saying yes. And I second. Any additional discussion? Then we will move to a hand vote. Board member Rodriguez Pena? No. Board member Bo? Yes. Board member Arianes? No. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. And I am also a yes. And so the motion passes three yes to two no. Before you guys leave, we invite you to come to our high school. I know you guys have done, I know the kind of work you're doing in Pomona. I helped co found the Latino Roundtable. Come over to this. You guys are the San Gabriel Valley, Pomona Valley Latino Roundtable, not just the Pomona Roundtable. Um, yes, we'd love to have you guys host you guys over here. Moving on to item 4.2, discussion and decision of school reorganization, school mascot and colors for Gladstone Middle School. Are there any questions um, or, or any information requested or is there a motion? I would like to go ahead and motion 4.2. Second. What is your motion? To go ahead and change the mascot and the colors together. Second. A moved by board member Adianis, second by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Uh, my discussion is if, if it passes, are we gonna go to the same process as including a, a community and they would be working on, the same committee will work on both of them. Um, I would request a little bit of time, um, but I think sim I think mostly yes. I I'm just wondering out loud, like again, don't hold me to this, but I'm wondering out loud, do we involve middle school students in the in the middle school process? Uh, you know, th those kinds of things I'm just thinking out loud right now, but mostly 100% yes. Part of the stakeholders though, in the high school, you would include students. Initial, initial thoughts, absolutely. Yeah. That's so why not? Can I get a point of clarification from board member Arianes? And I just want to make sure if, if the motion is to change the mascot and seek recommendations from the same committee, I'm going to be looking at the other. I want to make sure clear. That is correct. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Um, although I appreciate the comment by Rhonda about what a gladiator is. I think I think I'm I'm okay. I would be okay keeping it as the Gladstone Gladiators. I think um, alumni that have gone there for decades are losing a high school, but at least they'll have they could still have a space with a name attached to it. Um, and I don't think it hurts us at all to have our middle school called the Gladstone Gladiators. So I'm okay with keeping it the way it is, even if even though it's, we're treating it differently than the high school. Um, I think clearly tonight showed that there are 
there are many multitude of reasons to change the mascot at Azusa High School. And so I, that's, I, that I would be comfortable just keeping it as the Gladstone Gladiators. That, that is not the motion, right? I know, but I'm just giving my discussion. And um, in addition to that, um, I, I'd be happy either way, but we will save money if we do not have to um, do both high schools. Um, that um, funding is, is a big thing right now. Too. Board Member Bo, did you have anything to add? Not at this time, thank you. I also would be, um, I, I would not be in favor of this motion and would, uh, would, would vote no so that the uh, mascot and colors remain the same at Gladstone. Then I, if there's no further discussion, I will call for the vote. And the motion does not pass. Uh, it, it fails uh, two yeses to three noes. So maybe I misunderstood. So what was the motion? Was the motion to, to keep it or? OK, so I, I'm confused then. You can, I, I, you can I, ask I, Gabriela what's her motion. I'm... Thank you for that, Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. So the motion was basically to decide to change the mascot in colors and now um, that board member Greer shared as board member Cruz and Zalza also shared that they were not in favor of changing Gladstone High School Gladiators mascot or colors. And so they opposed it. And so what this means is that, um, it, that they do not want to change the majority. There's three of them that do not want to change Gladstone High School's mascot or colors. They would like to keep them such as and it would be Gladstone. The only thing that would change what would be Gladstone Middle School instead of Gladstone High. So That's I'm it. sorry, then I misunderstood and I changed my vote to a no. I, so I don't know how so let the record, done, but I'm, I think I misunderstood. So let the record reflect that the motion Please. failed one yes to four no. Um, actually, Carlos, in a situation like that, if she misunderstood, she gave a second. You seconded a motion. Here's here's what I'm, what I'm wondering. Does that just is does the fact that uh, board member Adianis's motion failed does that seal that? Because there still wasn't a decision. There was just a there was just a no given. And the fact that board member Rodriguez Pena said that she misunderstood and she was the second does that nullify the the vote to even begin with? I don't think we need to go back to nullify the vote in its entirety. Of the bottom line here is that we've had a practice here at on the dais of changing the vote after it's presented on the screen. And so I think the simplest way to go about it is a board member Rodriguez Pena said she wants to change her vote. No, the motion fails. And so you can kind of move on. Um, so therefore, we, we we will take that to mean that the uh, mascot and colors remain the same at Gladstone Middle School? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Then moving on to item 4.3, discussion and decision of school reorganization, Longfellow School. I, I will, I'll ask um, staff if I know this was something that uh, the preference was back in December. The preference was that we wait until the, the new year to, to make this decision. And so now that we are on the, on the other side of Christmas break, um, is there any inform, can you provide us with some in, information and, and thinking in regards to um, Longfellow? Yeah, I can share some, uh, some data uh, on Longfellow to help uh, with your conversation uh, and decision. Uh, right now at Longfellow School, um, it is a preschool through TK school. Uh, the TK that exists at Longfellow is a dual immersion uh, class room. Uh, there are eight teachers uh, at Longfellow School uh, currently. And, amongst those, and among, amongst those eight teachers, there are 12 classes that are taught uh, because um, a, a preschool uh, is AM and PM, okay? Um, at Gladstone High School, um, there are some programs. Longfellow. 
sorry, <laughs> at Long yeah, at Longfellow School, uh, there are some programs that are not funded by uh, California State Preschool Program. Uh, so we have our dual immersion TK that is not funded uh, by CSPP. We have our special education preschool that is not funded by uh, CSPP. And we have our dual immersion preschool that is not funded uh, by CSPP. Uh, the CSPP um, sections and teachers, uh, those have to be in licensed rooms. Uh, and even though the other ones don't have to be in licensed rooms, uh, we definitely uh, work uh, towards ensuring uh, that they are in licensed room, although they don't have to be. Um, if we were to move in the direction of uh, closing uh, Longfellow, um, the we would have to ensure that we have uh, licensed rooms at um, at our other sites. But right now, that only pertains to Hodge. So Hodge is the only school that doesn't have currently a licensed uh, room where we can put preschool. That process can be anywhere from three months to a year, um, depending. Um, but if we look at the two-year timeline, that still can, can uh, set us up for that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if we were to move in the direction of movement, just some things to consider. All of the other schools um, that currently house preschool, which is all of them except Ellington and Hodge, um, they are not at capacity. So there is room at all of our elementary schools to house uh, more preschool students. In addition to that, we have five schools that have licensed classrooms that we are currently not using for preschool. So that there's there's a there's a there's a a built-in expansion there if we wanted to uh, to to do that uh, just for. Uh, just to, to ensure that we're moving in the right direction, we would engage with licensing uh, just to say, okay, we're going to move in this direction. We're actually going to put um, uh, students there now, um, but we don't we don't see that as a as a as a big thing. We would also have to engage with the state um, to uh, ensure that uh, we have moved our programs uh, to the correct locations uh, and that they are aware uh, of the locations. Uh, that are currently being funded, uh, and 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 where they are, uh, where they are at. Um, so um, that's some some data points uh, in terms of of Longfellow. We can ask answer any other uh, questions uh, that you might have. Board member vote. Thank you, board president. I'd like to make the motion to table this item. Nice. You, um, so I, oh, is there a second for that? Can I ask I was, for I, clarification? I ask, what was the rationale behind that? that well, um, can, Carlos, could you? I, I just, I was going to ask board member Bo for clarification whether or not you wanted to postpone this matter to, I guess, to a specific board meeting or to the discretion of the board president to bring the matter back. Uh, I'd like to have it tabled to uh, be brought back at a, at the discretion of the board president. Okay, so that'd be a motion to postpone. And is that that is up that that is not up for discussion? Does that require a second and and discussion and vote? He's making it as a motion, so I would ask for the second. You you have not formally adopted Robert's rule, so if there needs to be some discussion about the motion, I think that's acceptable within his rule. Sure. So so um, motions to table postpone are non debatable, and I and I was hoping we could have a conversation about this, Sabrina. I'm wondering if you're willing to withdraw your motion so we can just have a quick discussion before you do your motion again. Or if you want a second. I'll withdraw the motion for the sake of discussion. Thank you. So I think um, for, for me to understand, I mean, as it, I mean, traditionally, right, um, the really Hodge has been, has been um, impacted by space, right? And if we think about it, they don't even currently house their own TK, one of their TK programs, because you have the dual emergent TK program. Um, 
that used to serve feed into two schools, but now we have that we have Valleydale TK dual immersion. So that really is the dual immersion for the for the Hodge program. Um, compounded with the fact that in my mind there is room for expansion. So we we've been able to create preschool programs at all our elementary schools, yet also keep uh, Valleydale, I mean Valleydale, Longfellow going. To me, speaks that it doesn't make sense to close it, um, knowing that. We don't have any full day preschool programs in our district um, and the state is incentivizing that. We, I, I know personally people who don't come to our preschool programs because they need full day and they in our, live in our community but have to go someplace else, often a, maybe a poor quality program because we don't offer full day. So I would just, so knowing that would take up more space, right? Because then one class would take a full day. Knowing on top of that, that the state is looking at expanding CSPP since we have, we're going to have universal TK. And I, I'm, I'm appreciative that we're ahead of the bandwagon on that one, right? So we're, we're way ahead on that. Um, that they're even thinking about for CSVP starting to let, allow districts to enroll two-year-olds, right? Which I think for us would be, I mean, it's a big thing to do, right? But knowing that and knowing that there's places for us as a, as a unified school district to really eventually become a birth to 12 district, right? I would just, I, I'm not in favor of closing Longfellow because I think it, Sort of closes opportunities for us. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes, my, uh, my question is talked for Latasha. If I recall, before the pandemic, uh, either we had a, an application or something out for a uh, full day, and then um, I never heard about it anymore. It's I'll take that one, Miss Rodriguez that? Pena. Um, yes, we are keeping our ears and our eyes and everything uh, close to uh, the ground. Uh, we will be at the moment that that is announced as a funding opportunity. Uh, we are ready and able and 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 willing uh, to apply. We 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 have that desire uh, to open up a full day, full year uh, program uh, in our district. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Board Member Bo, is your hand still raised from uh, your previous motion? Apologies, I I lower my hand. Okay. Any other conversation discussion? I would like to vote on this today because we do have it on the agenda. Other, I mean, other if there's like an urgency why we should not, but um, that's why we have it on this agenda today. So, Sabrina, I'm just curious why you um why you thought it'd be why why we should table it. I mean, I'm open to that. I just want to know why. I'm I'm happy to have a one of my colleagues, you or another colleague, make a motion for Longfellow. Um, you need a motion. Motion. But she's not going to do it. She's not going to put her motion out the table yet. One of us can make a motion. So, for us to make a motion to um, keep Longfellow open, I'll second. So moved by Board Member Rodriguez Pena that we that Longfellow remain open. Second by Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. Any additional discussion? Then we will move to a vote. And the motion passes five to zero, which brings us to 5.0 and specifically 5.1 adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved by Board Member Rodriguez Pena, second by Board Member Arianes. Any discussion? Then we will vote. And the motion passes five to zero. And so we are adjourned on 9, 14 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.